electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Today I want to talk about export and export prices and how much I can gain. And specifically, is it time for me to switch over to a smart export guarantee? It's a question that a lot of people have been asking me in the comments for quite some time. Am I paid for what I export? Because I export a heck of a lot of energy because I've now got quite a lot of solar panels on the roof and we have a lot of spare excess solar. So am I paid for it? Let's start from the beginning. So I installed a 3.9 kilowatt solar array with a 3.68 kilowatt inverter. That's the standard sort of installation. And that's the installation that I currently receive FIT payments for. So I installed that right at the end of when FIT payments were being offered and I got the lowest <laughs> rate there was. And it's the thing that encouraged me to get it done then rather than the next two or three months. I might as well have taken a little bit of money that was available on the FIT payments rather than delay and get nothing because at the time I didn't know that smart export guarantees were coming along. So anyway, I get paid a FIT payment. So at the moment, let's look at those numbers and see what I actually get. The last payment I received was £140.16. and pence. That's uh, just the other month I received that. So £81.91 of that was for generation and £58.25 of that was for export. So the prices for that it was 3.92 pence per kilowatt generated. That's now gone up to 4.21 pence per kilowatt hour, a increase of 7.4%. And the export side was 5.57 pence per kilowatt hour. Now that's 5.99 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's gone up 7.5%. So that's the values that I've been receiving recently. So right now, that's how much I'm receiving for export. So one of the first things to do is to consider if I did move to a smart export guarantee scheme, what would I have to do to get that? And the thing I have to do is give up the export payment part of my FIT tariff. So I don't have to give up the generation part of it, but I do have to give up the export part. The reason for that is because I've got three solar arrays. So the first one, as I said, 3.9 kilowatts of panels, 3.68 kilowatt inverter that I'm receiving payments for import and export on on. But the other two, I don't receive anything for. Now, how can an energy company tell what I export and which array it came from? Because the meter that I have on the solar inverters is a generation meter, not an export meter. So I have to start from fresh. I have to not be paid anything for export. And then I can go on to a smart export guarantee. Then everything that I export, where ever it comes from, whichever solar array it's generated from, I can get paid for. So that's the idea. I keep the generation on the one array and I get paid export on all three arrays. So to do that, what I have to consider is what I'm giving up. What I'm giving up is those export part payments from the FIT tariff, and that's a deemed export of 50% of what I generate. So let's have a look. What did I generate on that array over the last few years? 2019 was 4.17 megawatt hours. 2020 was 4.54 megawatt hours. And 2021 was 3.962 megawatt hours. So that averages out at 4.224, 4,224 kilowatt hours of energy generated. So half of that, 2,112 kilowatt hours, is what I'm paid for export. So 2112 times 5.99 pence equals 126 pounds and 51 pence. That's what I'm giving up potentially. If I move over to a smart export guarantee, I won't be paid for the export of half of what I generate on that single array. So that's what I'm giving up. I'm giving up 126 pounds, 51 pence. I'm starting by being a little bit worse off. So what can I potentially gain? So the first thing to think about is it's not just multiplying that same number by a new price because now it's all of my exports. So how much am I exporting over the last few years? In 2020, we exported 2,686 kilowatt hours. 2021 was only 1,557 kilowatt hours. And 2022 is 1,893 so far for six months. So for a full year, including our latest third array with extra solar panels, that'll be 3.7 megawatt hours exported. So that's now more. We're exporting more than what we were getting paid previously. We've been paid just over 2,000 kilowatt hours of export. Now we're going to be exporting about 3,700 kilowatt hours. So we've got an increase. 
the previous values of what we've exported aren't really relevant anymore because those previous years were based on the old solar arrays that I had. Now that I've got these three solar arrays with more solar panels, then I'm going to be exporting more. So only the latest one is relevant for the calculations. Only 3,700 kilowatt hours a year is what I'm going to base my calculation on. So how much can I gain? What could I gain if I swapped to a smart export guarantee now with my 3,700 kilowatt hours of export every year? So I'm going to look at just Octopus Energy Smart Export Guarantee tariffs. And the reason for that is there are lots of other options, lots of other companies, but Octopus Energy are renowned as one of the cheapest in the market. So there's no point really looking at other ones. You know, there might be the odd one that's a little bit cheaper here or there or a little bit better, but I might as well use one of the best, which is the one that I'm with, the one that I'm going to stay with, Octopus Energy. So if I just swap to an energy tariff without being an energy customer, they give 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour. So for 3,700 kilowatt hours, that's £151.70 that I could get for that exported energy. £151 versus the 126 that I'm giving up, I'm better off. But the 4.1 pence isn't for Octopus Energy customers. I'm an Octopus Energy customer already, and even though I'm on the GO tariff, I can still get the fixed smart export guarantee value, which is 7.5 pence. So 7.5 pence a kilowatt hour, times 3,700 kilowatt hours is £277.50. Now we're talking, now we're over twice the value of what I was getting on the FIT tariff. So it's starting to sound a lot better. But what if I wasn't on the GO tariff? What if I swapped to the Octopus Agile Outgoing tariff? So the outgoing tariff pays me per half hour, specifically priced to what the wholesale market price is for energy being exported. Now, I believe um, the data I've looked at shows about an average of 20 pence per kilowatt hour is what I could achieve if um, I export energy using that tariff. So at different times of day, I'll get a different price for it. It's not a fixed value. So at 20 pence a kilowatt hour, that works out to be 740 pounds. Part of that average of 20 pence per kilowatt hour will be the ability of exporting just between the peak times of four in the afternoon to seven o'clock at night. At that time, the price can be 30 pence, 40 pence. Even during some of the really crazy peaks that we saw, it was two pounds a kilowatt hour. So I don't expect those um, silly peaks again. But if I export using my battery at just those times, four o'clock to seven o'clock, then I can maximize the value that I'm getting and maximize the export price that I'm getting. So I should get about 20 pence per kilowatt hour on average, even though at other times during the day, I'm only getting one pence, five pence, because it can be less. It can be less than the four or seven pence um, because it's the wholesale price. If there's a glut of energy in the market, they won't pay hardly anything for it at all. So I think my average is a fair average calculation of 20 pence per kilowatt hour. So there you go, that's what we've got so far. So I'm giving up 126 pounds 50, and I'm potentially gaining either 277 pounds 50 if I stay on go, which I'd be better off with, or if I swap to the outgoing tariff, then I will be 600 and, how much is that? 620 ish pounds better off. But am I? Am I really better off by £620? Because if I swap to the Agile outgoing tariff, then what I import the energy for will also be based on the price that the wholesale market is at that half hour period. So my average price per kilowatt hour will start going up and up and up as I use more energy at more expensive times of day. Obviously with a battery and with solar, I'm going to do my best not to use energy. But the question is, do I? Do I use energy and how much do I use? So let's have a look at the implication of if I went to Octopus Outgoing Agile using the amount of import that I currently use. So looking at a full year, the last 12 months of energy usage, it comes out at 3.9 kilowatt hours at an average price of 15 pence per kilowatt hour, 9.3 kilowatt hours at 15.5 pence per kilowatt hour, average. Now, as you can see that the more energy we're using, the lower the average price is, and that's because I'm using the go tariff. So when I'm using more energy, I'm trying to use it in the cheap period. November last year was 360 kilowatt hours, 5.34 pence per average. That's the lowest. October and July was six at 15 pence per kilowatt hour on average. So if you add all of those averages up and you add up all of those kilowatt hours, 
then I spent £147.25 on energy using Octopus Go in the last 12 months. Now, presuming that my energy tariff on Go is going to go up by at least 50%, so let's say 50% in September, October time, it's going to go up, then my next year's energy price will be about £220 on the same basis of what I've done for the last 12 months, heating my house with electricity as well. So £220, well, first thing to say is £220 is a tiny bill, isn't it? So I really don't mind that. Um, I wouldn't mind staying on the Octopus Go tariff because it's so cheap. So I'm very positive about staying on Go. So would it be better off going to an agile tariff where instead of getting five, six, seven, nine, ten pence per kilowatt hour, I'm going to be having to pay, I don't know, what is it at the moment? Something like 30 or 40 pence per kilowatt hour. That's a little bit more scary. So at least three or four times the cost. So if I move to the outgoing Agile tariff, I have to have the incoming Agile part with it as well. So I'm gaining £740 potentially for my export. I'm losing what I'm giving up on the fit tariff of 126 So I'm about £620 in credit so far. And I know I'm spending £220 a year next year, let's say, on energy costs. So how much more would I be spending if I was on the tariff? So I looked at the average over the last six months. The average agile price over the last six months has been 31 pence per kilowatt hour. So multiply that out by the uh, number of import kilowatt hours, and that comes out to be 623 pounds, less the 220. So that's 400 pounds worse off. If I look at the best four hour period, so what's been the cheapest agile import period, for the last six months, um, it's 26 pence. So in theory, if I charge up the car and I charge up the hot water and I charge up the home storage battery and do all of those things and boost the heating all at the cheapest times, then in theory, I should be able to get that price down to 522 pounds. So I can save 100 pounds by shifting my energy use somewhere else. And it's, that's not a, not a huge saving, just 100 pounds out of 600 pounds. The difference between 31 pence per kilowatt hour and 26 pence per kilowatt hour. I do like it when uh, I'm in the middle of doing a video and a cracker starts barking or something happens and somebody comes home or there's some distraction and you lose your train of thought. Anyway, uh, I've just had a delivery, a delivery from my energy. So um, that's a positive thing. But where was I? What was I talking about? So export wise, I can be £620 better off if I move to the outgoing tariff or £150 better off if I move to the fixed export tariff with uh, Octopus. But I'll be worse off if I stay on the Agile outgoing tariff because of the extra cost of heating and doing everything in winter when I haven't got enough solar generation. So that's between a cost of 600 and 520 versus an existing electricity cost of 220 So I'm between three and £400 worse off then I'm only two to three hundred pounds better off. So that's the crux of it. If I stay with either the Go tariff or stay with the Octopus um, Agile outgoing tariff, then I can save 150 pounds a year or I can potentially save 220 to 320 pounds a year. So I am better off whichever one I do. But the question is, is that enough? Is that enough to mean change? Is that enough for the hassle of change? Am I that interested in that amount of money? So I suppose £150, it's nice to have and it's simple because I stay with the existing one. So to be honest, probably. I think it does make sense definitely to swap to the Octopus Smart Export Guarantee Tariff. I don't have to rush into it, you know, it's not a huge amount of money, but it, but it does make more sense for me to do that. Now that I have extra solar panels and I'm exporting more, the case definitely justifies. Before these extra panels, it was a bit break even. You know, it might have worked, it might not have worked, and therefore it wasn't really worth doing. But the big question is, if I go to the outgoing tariff, then it suddenly jumps from 150 to 620 pounds better off with export value. So with that sort of value, it is really tempting to do it. The smart way to do this, to optimise all these values, is during the summer when I've got an excess of solar energy, be on the outgoing tariff and maximise my income from it. Then, 
when um, then when the winter comes and I'm importing more energy, swap to the GO tariff. So probably just for three months of the year, November, December and January, I could swap off to the GO tariff without a smart export guarantee and that would optimise my income and minimise my costs over winter. But that would mean me every year swapping and rotating between Agile and Go. So I'm doing this video having reviewed these numbers and I don't know whether I'm going to do it and I don't know when I'm going to do it. Um, the whole idea of my having more solar panels is that I can trade energy and I can't do that on a FIT payment. So at some point I'm going to move to Smart Export Guarantee. That's for certain. I think the future is going to be on the outgoing product, not the fixed 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour export. I think the way to go will be on the agile product, because I do believe that we're going to get, whereas at the moment there's more flat high pricing in agile, I do think there's going to be more variation between different times of day. And it'll come back to how it was with Agile, not to the same sort of levels, but the same sort of variance between the low prices and the high prices. So, yeah, I do think there's going to be some value in going on the Agile outgoing side. Probably the sensible thing to do is have a go. I've got good experience of being on the Agile product and being on the Go product, but I haven't been on the Agile outgoing product. So I ought to do it, shouldn't I? I should do it just to test it and see what happens. The, what I'm seeing is that I should be a couple of hundred pounds better off through doing it. So that, that's what I need to do. I need to get myself organised, get my documentation together, because applying for a Smart Export Guarantee scheme, I do need my DNO certificate and documentation. I do need the MCS certificate for my installation. So if I get all that together, I can apply for the Smart Export Guarantee and move over to the Octopus Outgoing product. So I think... Is it the right time to do it now? Because if I do it now, then I'm, I'm going to be tempted to swap back to go around September, October, probably October time. But um, if I swap back to go in October, then I'll be swapping on to a higher price because the prices are about to change. If I stay on go, then I'll be renewing in September, hopefully renewing on the, the better prices. So actually, there's the toing and froing and swapping is going to mean I'm worse off as well. So Perhaps this year is not the right time to do it. Perhaps I should make sure that I get renewed at a better price with Octopus Go now. And then, once I've finished using that over the winter, then swap onto the Agile outgoing next year. So at the moment, I'm not 100% sure when to swap. But I'm 100% sure I'm going to swap at some point. I hope you found that useful. I hope there's some information there and some of my calculations that you can apply to your own situation and make a decision whether you've moved or are going to move over to a smart export guarantee. But definitely for me, I think it makes sense for me to start not just thinking about, but start making plans to actually do it. I can see from these numbers that I'm better off whichever one I go for. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. More videos to come, electric cars, home storage batteries, all sorts of solar and home storage energy related product reviews and considerations lots going on and i've just reorganized the octopus energy heat pump survey that's happening on the 18th of july now so i'm looking forward to that next i need to get the solar installer back to finish off my installation here there's so much going on and yeah that delivery from my energy i need to get that sorted as well i'll tell you about that later take care see you again bye for now